Well, hello there all. My name is Kate and welcome, welcome to this channel. Today we're going to visit one of the most beautiful cities in Finland, Turku. And I will tell you about the top 10 places to visit in Turku. Turku, as we mentioned, is a very beautiful city in the southwest coast of Finland on the river Aura. It is Finland's oldest city and its first capital. Sadly, the capital status was lost in 1812 after Russia won the war with Sweden. Many people refer to Turku as the original capital. Today, Turku is a stunning fusion of historical buildings, contemporary design, delightful parks, crazy buzzing nightlife, add to the mix a scenic river of Aura, the heart and soul of Turku, something that makes Turku resemble Paris. In fact, many people refer to Turku as the Paris of Finland, we'll tell you more later. Plenty of cafes, some of the best restaurants in Finland. If that's not enough to entice you, medieval castle to add. And now a little bit about the history. It is unknown when exactly Turku gained city rights, but the Pope Gregory IX first mentioned the town in 1229, and today this year is considered to be the foundation year of Turku. Turku, as we mentioned, is the oldest city in Finland and served as most important city in eastern part of Kingdom of Sweden, modern-day Finland. After the Finnish war, Finland became autonomous Grand Duchy of Russian Empire in 1809, and Turku was made into a capital of the Grand Duchy. However, Turku lost its status as a capital only after three years in 1812 when Tsar Alexander I of Russia decided to move the capital to Helsinki. To add insult to injury, in 1827 a great fire took place and most governmental institutions were moved to Helsinki. Along with the Royal Academy of Turku, founded in 1640, which at the time was the only university in the country, and then became the University of Helsinki. In spite of these true misfortunes, Turku continued to be the most popular city in Finland for a while, and to this day remains a regional capital, important business and cultural center, and a large vibrant port. Because of its long history, it has been the site of many important events and has extensively influenced Finnish history and culture. Turku was designated as European Capital of Culture in 2011. In 1996, it was declared as the Christmas city of Finland. Turku also has been officially declared as the food capital of Finland because it holds a number of some of the oldest and best restaurants in Finland. And now to the aspect of Paris. Turku canteen and cafe culture are often compared to the French food culture, which is why Turku has been perceived as the Paris of Finland. There is a lovely Swedish saying, why Paris? We have Turku. Now that you're hopefully seriously considering visiting Turku, I would like to suggest simply exploring city at your own pace. That's one of the greatest pleasures of traveling in Turku, is just wandering from coffee shop to coffee shop or from restaurant to restaurant, <laughs> or if you're into something hotter from bar to bar, while exploring the great seeing of culinary delights in Turku and at the same time seeing the architecture and beautiful views, as well as the scenic river Aura. Also, what's very important is really look into the events calendar before you visit Turku, because Turku hosts hundreds, if not thousands of events every year, and while visiting, you should be sure not to miss any. And there are many options for any taste. There's Turku Day, Night of Art, Medieval Market of Turku, Turku Christmas Eve Ceremony, just to name a few. And if you have taste for great music, Turku has a lot to offer. There are music festivals, the worldwide known Bruce Rock, Finland's oldest and largest annual rock festival, and down by the Lautari and Turku Jazz. And number one on our list is Turku Castle. It is among Finland's most prized jewels of national heritage, as well as one of the oldest buildings. Turku Castle took shape in the late 13th century during the Finland's Swedish period. It was built to defend the province of Eastland, but later took on all sorts of different roles during the centuries. It was a luxurious palace, an administrative center, and a seat of government, and a warehouse, and even a prison up to the end of 1800s. Following a delay, the building was finally renovated in 1987 and now it is a lovely museum. One of the best museums, in fact, that I've visited in Turku. 
If you're traveling with the family and particularly with kids, I can hardly think of any better place to suggest. For kids, it's truly a delightful place to visit. They can dress up in armor in Knight's Hall and be in the rooms decorated with the period's furniture and truly experience the history on their own fully. Junko Castle consists of two parts. Bailey and Main Castle. In medieval ages, they were built fortifications that eventually grew into Bailey during the Renaissance. Bailey's Golden Age took place in the 1600s when it functioned as the Governor General's office and the center for regional administration. Later, all the way until 1891, it actually served as a prison. Today, Bailey houses exhibitions of history of Turku Castle. And now to the main castle. The main castle, which is built from grey stone, actually represents the castle's oldest construction. The construction began in 1280 on a small rocky island on the river Aura. Throughout the medieval ages, the fortified camp was partially wooden structure and later it grew into a magnificent stone castle. The purpose of the castle was to guard the sea route into Turku. When you're walking in the dimly lit rooms of the lowest floors of the main castle, you get a feel of the mysterious medieval ages and the life during that time. The castle's top floors with the bright, spacious, beautiful rooms that were built during the Renaissance would give you the feel of the Renaissance era. Number 2 on our list, Turku Cathedral. Undoubtedly the city's most remarkable landmark. Turku Cathedral lies on the banks of Aura River. It's a massive and beautiful cathedral with West Tower rising to the height of 102 meters. It can be seen from virtually anywhere in the city, therefore can be used for navigation. The cathedral is the mother of evangelical Lutheran Church in Finland. It's the greatest medieval monument in the country. Posing Brick Cathedral was dedicated to Virgin Mary and Finland's first bishop, Saint Henrik. Originally, Turku Cathedral was actually built from the wood in 13th century and later greatly expanded in 14th and 15th century. Sadly, due to the same great fire that we talked about already in 1827, it suffered substantial damage. And most of the things that we see today is actually restoration carried out in 19th century. Turku Cathedral is considered to be the most important religious building in Finland, therefore Cathedral has witnessed many important events in the nation's history and became city's most recognized symbol. Among famous historical figures that are buried in Turku Cathedral is Karin Mann's daughter, the 16th century Queen of Sweden. Due to all of this, it's a hugely significant building for Turku, but also for the rest of Finland. It is a seat of Archbishop of Finland and a country's national sanctuary. Right in front of the cathedral, there is a lovely park, so it's definitely worth a visit. Number three, Turku Art Museum. If you're an art lover, that should be a place not to miss. It's one of the best art museums in the city. The museum is located in the beautiful Art Novara style stone building that kind of resembles a medieval castle. Museum has more than 7,000 works of art, mostly by Finnish artists from 19th to 20th century. The exhibitions are very well curated, very well organized, and collections of Finnish Golden Age paintings are truly impressive. Right behind the museum there is a lovely park that in the winter you can actually sled here and in the summer simply enjoy the lush greenery of the park. And another museum I could recommend is the fascinating Aboa Vatis and Ars Nova. It's a museum that hosts both contemporary art and archaeology museum. These museums are located in Bretig Palace and that's a former private residence of tobacco factory owner. And number four, Turku architecture. One of the greatest things about visiting Turku is the fact that you can see various architectural style while taking a walk in the city. Turku's city landscape includes a huge variety of architectural styles from different historical periods. There are great examples of Art Nouveau, Neoclassical, Neo-Renaissance and Nordic Classicism styles. In this video, I will later tell you about some of the most notable examples of neoclassical style. That would be 
Orthodox Church, Neo-Renaissance style, the example would be Turku Main Library, and the mix of Art Nouveau and Neo-Gothic styles, that would be St. Michael's Church. Number five, Turku Market Hall. Without visiting this particular place, you can hardly say that you've been to Turku. If you are in any way interested in traditional Finnish delicacies, and you have to be because they're awesome, then you absolutely have to visit Turku Market Hall. In search for traditional Finnish cuisine, this place is indispensable. <laughs> That's like the best place to go. A lot of both traditional and contemporary dishes here. The building itself is stunning. It's an architectural gem of Finland completed in 1896 and today delights the guests with its lovely atmosphere of bygone eras. So my particular favorite is actually a fairly simple dish, Kirelin Pirka, which is Karelian pie. And Karelian pie is basically rice stuffed pie and you have it with eggs butter. So eggs and butter mixed together and the taste is just amazing. Number six is promised an example of Renaissance style building Turku Library. It was constructed in 1903. It was designed in a style of Swedish House of Nobility of Stockholm. First floor of National Library was the library for the working class and the second floor was the library for academics. Those two libraries merged in 1912 and became simply Turku City Library. Turku Library has expanded and moved to a newly constructed building in 2007. So today we can witness wonderful examples of buildings built in both beginning of 20th century and beginning of 21st century. And another promised building in Neo-Gothic style, number seven, Michael's Church. A church situated in central Turku and named after Archangel Michael. It was finished in 1905. It dominates the western skyline of the city. This beautiful church was designed by Professor Lars Song and today it is one of the most popular wedding churches in Turku. It is able to sit around 2,000 people and when Song won the competition for the church in 1894, he was actually very young, only a 23-year-old student. And as you pointed out, Michael's Church is a distinguished example of neo-gothic style and architecture in Turku and certainly worth your attention. Number eight on our list, the Orthodox Church of St. Alexander. This church is located on the northeast corner of Turku Market Square. The church was designed by a famous architect that designed most of the buildings in Helsinki, Karl Ludwig Engel. It was ordered by Nicholas I of Russia in 1838, construction began in 39, costed, if anyone interested, 67,000 rubles, which was back then a lot of money, in today's barely $1,000, and completed in 1845. The church was dedicated to Alexander. Alexander, the spouse of Diocletian, and who publicly became a Christian and suffered an awful death in year 303. The choice of patron saint might have been due to the fact that Nicholas's wife name was also Alexandra. Number nine, you have to walk by the river bank. Our river is truly scenic. Most of the sites are actually right by the river or very close to the river, so you absolutely need to walk by it and I would highly recommend doing that. A lot of the museums are close to it, great restaurants, great coffee shops, great bars are here as well. As you know, Turku, or if you don't know, now you do, Turku is a university city. There are lots of students here, so partying gets pretty hard, especially in the summer. Most of the boats that you see on the river actually serve as restaurants and bars, so it could be a super cool experience.
And number 10 on our list is Ilio Pistoncatu. Even though it's difficult to pronounce, doesn't mean you shouldn't visit it. It's a very beautiful street with lots of good shopping and lots of good food. It is very beautifully decorated during the festivals particularly during the Christmas. There's sometimes Christmas markets that are held here, so that's fun. That would be all. Thank you so much for joining me. If you're interested in more videos about Finland, check out my video about Helsinki. Uh, there's a video about Tampere. There are many videos just about life in Finland and 10 facts about Finland. I made a video about the second oldest city in Finland, Porvo, so check it out. Overall, if you enjoy the content, consider subscribing. Don't forget to put the like. Thank you so much for joining and see you soon.